Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to look at determining zero force members, but we're going to do it with what we call the sum of the force technique. In other words, we're going to take each joint and sum up all the force in the x direction and all the force in the y direction. And then if there's no possible way to eliminate a force, for example, if none of the forces add up to zero, then, or I should say, if none no singular force adds up to zero, then we cannot eliminate or we cannot determine if there's a zero force member there. So here we have a simple structure. We only have four joints. We're going to take a look at each of the joints. Notice I've taken each of the forces of each of the joints and indicated them here in these section drawings. And also, if there's a force at an angle, I've indicated the force component in the x direction and the force component in the y direction, just like we did here and here and also over here. So what we do at each joint is we're going to sum up all the forces in the x direction and the y direction, the sum of the forces in the x direction, and they should add up to zero and the sum of the forces in the y direction, they should add up to zero as well. So let's take a look. On joint A here in the x direction, notice we have one force in the positive x direction, force FAD, plus we have the x component of FAB, force AB in the x direction. Because there are two forces, this means that the one force must be equal to the negative of the other, and therefore we cannot eliminate either force AD or force AB. In the y direction, we can say, see here that we have force A in a positive direction, and we have force AB plus force AB in the y direction. Again, since I don't have a single force that equal to zero here, both forces can be assumed not to be zero member forces. Not necessarily true, but we cannot eliminate it using this technique. Coming over here at joint B, notice that the sum of the forces in the x direction are, we have a negative FAB in the x direction plus a positive FBC in the x direction. And because of that, we cannot eliminate either force AB or force BC. Therefore, we cannot determine them to be zero force members. In the y direction, notice the sum of the forces in the y direction. We have the negative load, negative force load. We have the negative force AD. We have the negative force AB in the y direction, and negative force BC in the y direction. Again, not a singular force that said equal to zero. Oop, I can't forget the equal to zero, otherwise it doesn't work. Uh, we know the sum of the forces must add up to zero. Again, no singular force can be set equal to zero. Therefore, we cannot determine if there's any zero force members there. Let's try joint C. The sum of the forces in the x direction must add up to zero. We have the minus force CD, and we have the minus force BC in the x direction. Again, no elimination of any forces. In the y direction, the sum of the forces in the y direction add up to zero. So we have the positive F sub C and we have the force BC in the y direction. Again, we cannot eliminate any forces. Therefore, we have not determined there to be any zero member forces. Finally, the last joint, we sum up all the forces in the x direction. They said equal to zero. We have minus FAD and plus FCD, so we cannot eliminate either one of those two, but in the y direction, the sum of the force in the y direction add up to zero. Here notice there's only one force in the y direction, which means automatically that force must be zero. That means that that is a zero force member. Now when you go back over to this joint right here, notice we had force AD here and we're not able to eliminate this force because it was equated with three other ones in the y direction and we could not determine that to be a zero force member. But now that we've confirmed that it is over here, this is a zero force member, therefore we know that this is also a zero force member, although we're not able to eliminate it or determine by this particular joint right here. That happens. But notice we did catch it when we did joint D. In summary, in this case, there's only one joint, the joint between D and B. I should say one member between D and B that carry a zero force load. 
the force over here then gets transferred to these two members, none of it gets transferred to this one. And if you remember the rules from the previous video, if we take a look at this joint right here, notice it's a three joint member, two are collinear, the third one is not, therefore since the third one is not collinear with the other two, that must be a zero force member by those rules as well. So we can see we've determined in two different ways now, either using the rules from the previous video or simply summing up the force in the x and the y direction at these joints to, to determine which are the zero force members. And that's how it's done.